Hello everybody and welcome to my tutorial on transport belts, splitters, and underground belts. I'm going to be showing you how these things work together and how to avoid some common errors. I've used yellow and black hazard concrete to indicate which designs should be avoided. Belts, underground belts, and splitters come in three varieties each. I'm going to be calling them yellow, red, and blue. Yellow belts are the slowest, red belts are twice as fast as yellow, and blue belts are three times as fast as yellow belts. Underground belts move the same speed as above ground belts of matching color. It is important to match colors when using belts and underground belts because as you can see in the hazard area, a yellow underground belt is not able to keep up with the input or output of a red belt. Uh, transport belts can hold a row of items on each side, making two lanes for transporting materials. Here we see some methods used to split or combine these lanes. It is important to note that the splitter in the hazard area will not balance the lanes because it puts all the plates on the bottom lane of the transport belt. This area shows a method of splitting apart a belt that has materials that are different on each lane. This works because underground belts have a hood over the entrance which blocks half of the belt from being accepted. Splitters are a very useful way to combine or separate transport belts. This design shows how a splitter can either combine two half full belts into one full belt, or split one full belt into two belts that are half full. Splitters are also capable of, of accepting two belt inputs and converting them into two full belt outputs. To output two full belts of material, two full input belts are necessary. A red belt is able to be split into two full yellow belts since red belts move twice as fast but red splitters are required. This also means that two yellow belts can be combined into a single red belt. The design on top shows that a yellow splitter cannot handle outputting two yellow belts onto a single red belt. The red belt will not be full using this setup. In the lower setup, a yellow splitter attempts to split an entire red belt onto two yellow belts, but is unable to keep up with the input provided by the red belt. These three designs show how splitting blue belts can be achieved. Since blue belts are three times as fast as yellow belts, a blue belt can be equated to three yellow belts, or one yellow belt and one red belt. These two designs show the effect of using red splitters where blue splitters are necessary, since red splitters cannot keep up with the input or output of a blue belt. This final design shows that while a blue belt can be split into two red belts, the red belts will not be saturated, which may or may not be a problem depending on what they will be used for. If all of this seems too complicated, just remember that using splitters or underground belts that are lower quality than your transport belts will affect the throughput of your system. And as always, thanks for watching.